Hey, Danger Martinez here with the Orlando Predators, a Spanish play-by-play -play announcer. You guys will be able to see me in action, I guess, or hear me in action, I should say, on Sports Radio 1, 2.9 FM, The Game, also on Vid96 in Orlando. Courses in collaboration with the Arena Football League as we all try to have fun and get to know people behind the scenes. So this is Backstage with the Predators and with me, the multi-talented because... I don't know how she fits everything in her day. It's beyond me, but Sirena Alvarez is with me, Alvarez, con, uh, for those who like to speak Spanish, of course. But uh, Sirena, thank you, first of all, for taking a moment out of your busy schedule to be with me today. Of course. Thank you, Angel, for having me. I'm very excited to be here. You're welcome. So a lot of people, right, because we all, everybody gets ready in different types of ways, depending on what we're doing. It's a meeting, meeting friends, doing all kinds of stuff. When For you guys, the recording artists, I know we don't hear too much about it. Like when you ever watch like musical shows, you never get to hear like, what did this person likes to do? You know, what, how do they get ready for you? Because you're going to be in front of what's going to be probably a very close to a sold out crowd with no pressure, you know, just the lights no. in the middle of the field. But what's it like, what do you do in order to get prepared and get ready for when you're just looking at the spotlight and everyone looking at you and knowing that you are about to perform at your best? That's an excellent question. How I get ready to perform my best for uh, uh, concerts like this, um, practice is key. You know, you have to know your, um, your, your lines, you have to know the melodies, you have to know what's gonna happen and you have to practice that until you can't fail kind of situation, you know what I mean? So right. I practice until I can't fail and um, I try to have fun with it. Usually the day of, um, I'll take it easy in the mornings, try to be as relaxed as possible. Um, I like to have some tea with some honey and lemon. It's my favorite. That's like the go-to cure for like any vocalist. Um, and then uh, I find, I found recently that the Jonas Brothers helps relax me. So I'll really? like throw on one of their latest albums. Um, it was produced by John Bellion. So that one's my favorite uh, as of the moment. So um, I'll throw that on and then I'll begin rehearsing um, I'll put my face on and um, I feel once I have my makeup and hair done I get to step into that essence of uh, of being the musician of being the entertainer um, and yeah and then I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll so now it, have you been somewhere let's just say like because we've all done it like in the car we'll put on music I am horrendous so I'm not going to sing anything whatsoever but we've had our moments like we'll, we'll sing somewhere like with friends or something else and with, with ladies it seems like you guys have more of a natural voice. Of you'll, you'll be able to sing anywhere you want. Have you been somewhere and you started singing something? Has anyone ever asked you, like, are you, do you perform for a living? <laughs> Often, actually. They're like, girl, what you doing with that voice? And you're just out here. I'm like, I'm here on an off day. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, um, I'm, I'm very lucky to uh, have such a great team behind me, um, working with Ashish Machanda at uh, Boone's, uh, sorry, at Boone Castle uh, Media and Entertainment. Um, they've, been able, they've been able to help support me in my journey and being able to pursue uh, being a musician as a career. So, um, yeah, I mean, you'll still find me out on karaoke nights every Wednesday. <laughs> you'll be able to see me like going down I-4, just singing in my car like nobody's business. I, I just, I love what I do. That's the, to me, that's the best part because I think uh, too many people take things a little bit too serious because when you're in a car, uh, now I will speak for me personally, if there's something that I hear, I'll dance in my own seat and, and dance like nobody's watching, right? We already heard that before with other people, but because it's fun, you feel the moment, you feel that groove and, and you want to dance. And you'll have people drive by and just keep you just looking like, what in the world is he yeah. doing? <laughs> it's, all fun. it's all life, especially like now for us in the Spanish community, I will say, because we tend to turn it up just a little bit more wherever we go. If it's salsa night, merengue night, bachata, no matter what it is, we like to have fun because for us, it's it's that moment to get rid of everything, not worried about a bill, not worried about what we got to do tomorrow. It's about getting together. Family reunions is a big one. Holidays, oh, yeah. I think it's a much bigger one because now it's almost like when you go to the club, you you don't, I don't want to say that we, we don't show out. Like, for example... You don't look at the next guy or girl and be like, I'm better than you. It's more of like, I feel good and I'm going to show everyone how good I feel. 
So when we're with the family, it's the opposite. It's like, yeah, I know who you are because we're family, but I'm going to outdance you on this one just because. But it's all in, it's all in fun. So for you guys, like around the holidays, even though we're not close to it, but what's the best part for you and your family, especially you now, because you're one of the, the, the singers in the family and you like and you have a great voice. What's it like for you when you guys get together for that reunion and you have that good time? How much fun do you guys have when you're all together? Oh man, when my family gets together, it's a blast. My dad is also a musician and right now he's uh, doing like DJing gigs. So he has the whole setup. He's got his mixing board, he's got the lights, he's got the he's got the speakers. So it's like a party. It's like a quinceañera, like every time we get together, even if it's just for like Sunday football. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it's cool. a great time. And then of course, like Abuelita comes with all of her like homemade food and, um, it's it's man, it's a blast. Yeah, it's the best part. We used to I, I tell Pete um, Pete Shepard who's who's on. I'm with him in the morning, over on uh, Riptide Media. The the fun part is that I told him before. Now it's it's completely different. Christmas parties and New Year's parties, especially like New Year's. Everything started at five, right? People come over to the house, they bring their food, and then it's or you, depending on whose house it is. So like when we were growing up. It was usually my mom's house. And then we had a basement. Well, I know Floridians don't know about what basements are, but if you live up north, <clears throat> it's the foundation under the house. And so what happened was everybody would get together and the food would be laid out. Then around seven <clears throat> is the actual dinner. So the music would start at five. You have like your little cocktail, whatever finger food, whatever it was. And then the dinner starts at seven. Then everybody sits around, they talk. Go back downstairs. The music then kicks up until midnight. Then midnight, you know, you, whatever you want to say at that time, everybody gets together again. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, for us, it was like that that late dessert, early continental breakfast. And then the music will keep going until 5 in the morning, 12 hours later. And then finally everybody come upstairs because then the full breakfast would happen. So I don't know if, if you guys still do that to this day or, or if you guys have a, a different rendition of it. But that's, I think, it's what we used to do during the holidays. Oh, yeah. Um, it's very similar to that. So my mom is Dominican and my dad is Mexican. Okay. So um, like when I'm having the holidays over on my mom's side, we're up until like the next day. And, you know, like all the kids, it's funny, all the kids would go to bed and then we'd come out and we'd see like all like all of my tias and all of my grandmas just like sitting and having their cafecito in the morning. And we're like, y'all didn't go to bed. They're like, no, but here's breakfast. You know, <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> like that. Like you said, <laughs> it's the best part because you get it's it's tough we are listen everybody lives a busy life but it's fun when you get together with the family and especially it's if it's been a while since everybody's kind of like partied and been together it's fun and and everybody's spread out right it, we all know as a hispanic household every you got people up north you got people west you got people further south in florida whether it being the dr like you said pr for my family in different places but i think that's the best time and and then kind of to switch gears when it comes to your music you also have a great part of your career, which is being a makeup artist. And to me, as I watch a lot what you do on Instagram, I'm, listen, I'm impressed just what you're able to do. So how did you get involved in this part of your life and how's it worked out? Thank you. Thank you very much for that compliment. You're yeah. Welcome. So um, makeup artistry has been um, something that's always intrigued me. Uh, there's this show on sci-fi that used to air and it was called Face Off. And it's where you had like three of some of the best uh, makeup artists. There was Vinyl, who's worked on Beetlejuice. There's Glenn Hedrick. And there's, oh man, um, another great gentleman. I see his face, but um, I went, oh man. Anyways, right that's going to haunt me. I'm going to wake up at three in the morning and I'm going to be like, it's this gentleman. Anyways. So watching that growing up, I was like, I, I want to learn how to do stuff like that. And then uh, Marvel movies were at their prime at that time. And I was like, you know what? I really want to work my way up to like get into union and to be on these kind of productions, you know? So I started looking and I'm like, all right, where are the best schools? And I found the best school uh, for me personally to be here located in Orlando. It's called the Vocational Academy of Makeup and Prosthetics. Um, I went there in 2019 
and I graduated from the program the same year. And um, I started off doing uh, like little haunted houses. I started doing indie films. Uh, we have a uh, Full Sail here, which is a film-based uh, college where they teach you everything that you need to know about being on set, about being a writer. They also have like an audio uh, production area, which um, Ashish happens to be like one of the. Uh, uh, like one of the, not the founders, but he's one of the, oh, help me out. Yeah, he's part of the Hall of Fame <laughs> here. Yeah. So, um, so uh, Full Sail here, they have people who do their, their masters and uh, they need more hands on deck. So I would apply to do uh, makeup there just to get my portfolio running. And it's like, these are just like small things, but it's something to put on IMDb as well, which is something that I didn't even think of, you know, as uh, as just starting out, I would think of IMDb as like Scarlett Johansson or like Chris Evans, you know, but um, anyone anywhere can do it. So I was like, then I'm going to do it. Um, as of recently, I've been able to have the honor to work with uh, these bigger productions for uh, NBC. I just did a shoot uh, with uh, Noah Lyles, uh, with Dace Magazine, um, a lot of Olympians as the Paris Olympics are going on now, or they're gonna be going on here soon. So uh, yeah, man, I've just, I, I'm, I'm so passionate about like everything that it comes to like entertainment. I try to get my foot into everything. I try to like be the jack of all trades, <laughs> but uh, master of one. <laughs> no, it's tough. Like, believe me, because it, it, it's hard being being in the industry where you're in the combination of both makeup artists and being a recording artist. Because you're right, you're you're blending both passions together, which is hard for someone to do normally you hear someone perfecting one or the other but when you're trying to perfect both crafts it's hard because now that's when you compete with your own self you're thinking okay i did this how can i do this better because that's what we all aim for is perfection for me you know being in, in that broadcast and radio industry it's tough because something goes wrong and in the back of your mind you try not to let it get the best of you but you already know like all right i i gotta do that better this has got to seem a little bit better so i applaud you for both because it's not the easiest thing in the world it's different when if somebody puts me on the spot it's it's not as bad it's different for you because if you're if you're somewhere let's just say you're on set somewhere just doing getting ready to do let's say just a zombie film and someone hears either your track or they hear your music they're gonna say hmm i wonder if i can get her to sing for me real quick to see if it's true <laughs> Have you ever gotten to that point where someone's like, you've been on set somewhere, you've been working just on the makeup side, not even you know, doing anything in music. Has anyone come across and said, wait, do you sing this song? Not yet. Um, okay. Right now, my album is set to release here uh, in August. So um, right now we're just building up the momentum to um, go ahead and promote that. But um, right now I just have like covers on YouTube of like Billy Joel, Katy Perry, um, some old classics. And uh, but yeah, no, some people will catch me humming as I'm like cleaning my makeup brushes and they're like, girl, what you doing over there with that voice? And I'm like, oh, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's good because again you get listen life is too short we all enjoy it we all like to have fun no matter what it, the world is crazy as is but you make the best of it every single day because how much more could we not enjoy what we love to do by sharing with other people you on the on the makeup side the, the gift with you is I, I find it super unique because you can literally mask your own self to be a complete different person and walk in somewhere and then surprise somebody with your voice because someone wouldn't expect it. Because we've seen, and I know it's it's different things, but we've seen Johnny Knoxville, for for example, and Bad Grandpa, right? Yeah. And no one's expected that, that it was him. But it's funny when you see him in action because like, who in the world was that? Unless he reveals himself, he doesn't know. You are lucky because you can do that. You can completely transform who you are in a different character, but yet still have that same glowing voice where people be like, Wait, I, I didn't expect that from from that person. So it's it's got to be the most the, the coolest thing ever to to be able to have the best of both worlds. But on top of that, what's the what's the the best trait you can think of when someone sees you first time in action? When in, in, and I'm just taking the music side to to the side, just you being a makeup artist. When they see you in action for the first time and seeing what you can naturally do. Are they more taken back or blown away to know that you are just that multi-talented person? <laughs> well, um, 
When people find out that I have multiple assets and multiple like uh, tools in my tool belt, um, it it becomes easier to get onto other projects because um, I act, I do makeup, I sing, and I'm learning how to produce music at the moment. I do modeling. Um, I grew up in entertainment. I grew up on stage. Um, I started learning piano when I was five, and we did like um, short musicals there at the school, you know. So I just, I, I have my hand in everything, and I have so much knowledge over these 24 years that I've been alive that I'm just a memory bank that I want to share everything that I can with other people, you know, um, which is also what I've found to be super useful now that I'm getting uh, deeper into the film industry. Um, if I'm going to be the face of my own product, which is now going to be music, um, I know I know uh, to meet up with the DP, be like, hey, let me know when you need me on set. We can get lighting set up. Um, let me know when you, how you need me to be angled. I can talk to everyone else on set. And it's just like one big family, you know? It makes everyone, uh, it makes everyone's job a lot easier. Um, I like to be personable and um, I like to help out as much as I can, you know? All right. Now, for those who are watching this at the moment, when you, I always tell this to people, I, I make it the biggest joke ever. You guys are now hit the number two on your phone and you're going to hear some some stuff here in Spanish. So don't freak out if you guys are like, oh my God, I don't understand what they're saying. Just hit the number two on your phone you'll be able to figure it out. But so, haciendo hispana, porque hay mucha gente que le gustan hacer, y quieren hacer artista, pero se ponen bien nervioso y no saben lo que hacer. So ellos se miran y dicen, bueno, puedo hacer esto. ¿Qué puedo hacer yo más mejor hoy? So tú haciendo una hispana, Sabiendo que nosotros les gusta a, a perfectar todo lo que nosotros hacemos. Cuando empezaste a cantar, ¿cuál fue la primera persona en la familia tuya que dijo que tú eras una buena cantante? La primera persona que dijo que yo soy una cantante fue mi abuelita. Um, se llama Trini y uh, Trini es de Colombia, so ella solo sabía español y ella uh, estaba allí, uh, allí uh, como uh, looking after me cuando yo estaba chiquita y mi mamá estaba allí uh, trabajando y entonces allí en la casa um, ella, ella prendió el radio hace su cafecito, está limpiando entonces yo soy aquí uh, cantando Gloria Estefan tú sabes, entonces, <risa> entonces ella mira para atrás y yo estoy bailando bailando, bailando, como ella sabía ella sabía que yo tenía ese talento y que um, yo puedo hacer algo con eso también, para la gente que uh, uh, yo, yo me presento enfrente de Sí, hay mucha gente, ¿verdad? que ellos dicen que ¿Cuál es la persona más importante en su vida? Ahora, yo tengo, todavía está mi mamá, está viva, es lo mismo con mi, mi abuela. Ahora, yo nunca le he hablado con ella como es mi abuela. Yo siempre la, le, le llamo a mami. So, cuando yeah. los dos estamos juntos, siempre soy mami. Entonces, las dos vienen para atrás. ¿Cuál? No, 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 la otra, la otra mami. Pero eh, no sé por qué. De niño, se, es, es duro, es un poquito fuerte, porque nosotros queremos hacer lo máximo que podemos hacer con la familia de nosotros. Entonces, con mi abuela, ella siempre me miraba como tú, tú vas a hacer algo, si no grande, algo más mejor para ayudar a toda la gente, lo máximo que tú puedas hacer. Entonces con mi mamá es lo mismo, todavía hasta este día, y eso que mi mamá es 49, es bien chiquita, pero mi abuela es 51, yo creo que es 5152, algo así. Uh -huh. Pero nosotros, como los hispanos, siempre con la abuela, el, el cariño es un poquito más. O sea, que, que lo propio mamá y, y, y padre nosotros. Estando cerca a su abuelita, cuando tú la ves, es algo que tú te sientes más grande que tú, que, y, y no sacando ni, ni, ni nada de tu mamá. Pero cuando ustedes están juntos, ¿te gusta estar más con la abuelita que tu mamá? Porque el, el tiempo es diferente. O sea, con tu mamá tú siempre estás ahí. Desde chiquita siempre estaba ahí. Con la abuelita es, es cuando ella viene a visitar. De las dos, para pasar el tiempo, ¿le gusta estar con tu mamá más o la abuelita? Bueno, <risa> eso es un poquito difícil, porque yo sé que mi mamá va a ver este, este video, ella va a oírlo y ella va a decir, bueno, te lo doy, güey, está bien, está bien, <risa> pero... Um, 
Ah, no, yo amo a mi abuelita más, más que todo, porque, tú sabes, uh, bueno, ella, ella murió uh, 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 en el, los 2021, yo creo, um, pero, man, tú sabes, ella estaba allí del principio, tú sabes, ella estaba allí para cada show, cada rehearsal, y ella ayudó como ella podía, tú sabes, y... Uh, ella fue como otra mamá para mí, tú sabes, ay, me está dando la última, pero, uh -huh. ay, cómo la amo, y uh, ella fue graciosa también, tú sabes, ella, ella fue muy calladita, pero cuando hablaba te da como un choque, <ríe> y tiene como, tiene, eh, she's very, ¿cómo se dice? Witty, tú sabes, uh -huh. tiene un wit, y ay, como yo la amo más de todo y yo sé que ella me quería como una hija no y ella, ella fuerte como digo la, la, bueno mi abuela tiene ya 92 entonces en, en un ojo no puede ver el otro le falta un poquito para no ver más nada pero si tú hablas con ella ella te busca porque ella, ella conoce o sea, quién la persona es por es diferente porque o sea, nosotros con la familia bueno los hispanos yo sé que los americanos hacen la cosa diferente. Con nosotros, los hispanos, siempre estamos al lado de uno. Que sea viejo o no está enfermado, siempre estamos unidos. Y entonces, pa, con tu diablo, ahorita, como tú dijiste, que tú, ustedes un, siempre estaban juntas. Ahora que ya le ha pasado el, el tiempo de ella, entonces tú estás con tu mamá. Ahora, el tiempo con tu mamá. Y ustedes, en, bueno, es, lo que yo creo, es anyway, que están cerca. Por el tiempo que ustedes tienen. ¿Cuál es más mejor con tu mamá? ¿Puede ser el cine? ¿Puede ser una música? ¿Puede ser la comida? ¿Qué te gusta más cuando tú tienes tiempo con tu mamá? El tiempo que yo paso con mi mamá, que sería mi favorito, es cuando yo la visito y uh, nada, comemos y hablamos, hablamos, hablamos y es, es nada de puro risa, tú sabes. Um, Ay, el amor que yo tengo para ella es infinito, tú sabes, ella es, ella es mi ángel y um, yo creo que ahora que yo tengo 24 años y yo estoy entendiendo cómo es la vida, yo uh -huh. tengo un respeto para ella que ni puedo, I, I can't measure, tú sabes, um, no, ella es mi héroe, yo, yo la amo, yo la amo como nada. You know, you guys can go back to press the number one on your phone and now you go back to <laughs> going back to the other side. You know, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out. And also, when you mentioned that your album's coming out soon, so that means that you have to come back here when the album drops. So there we can share it out with everybody and so they can hear exactly what's going on. But, you know, it's fun because, again, it's this Sunday coming up, it's going to be a, a, a moment for you along with the other two artists that are going to be on stage as well at halftime and post-game show. If, let's say you go first, because I'm not too sure how the lineup card is going to go. There's going to be a DJ there as well. Do you then, in the middle of the arena, while you guys are getting ready and, and taking turns at performing, if there's a song that you particularly like, do you dance to like no one's watching? Mm -hmm. You know it. <laughs> Anything that's got rhythm, you know Serena's gonna be moving. <laughs> um, man, I'm not shy when it comes to music. And it's like, I got so much respect for it. It's like, it's time to let loose. It's time to get all the nerves out and, you know, out on the field with all those people with you. It's something that helps you exude that energy to make everybody else have a good time. And that's the best part. At least to me, I think so. Because you do. Listen, I used to be, years ago, I've shared this on my show. I, I never used to, when when I was in high school, I was a nerd. Never talked to girls, nothing else. Because I just, you know, I wanted to get through school. My thing was like, I'll get through school, I'll worry about it later on. What I did learn was that if I went out to the dance floor, every time I looked around, I was like, nah, nobody's coming. So I learned how to dance basically by myself. But then finally, when I got the courage and started talking to the ladies, It was good because then you find your dance partner, which was then it's a lot of fun because one thing I think people don't understand is you can meet someone and just because you met that person, it doesn't mean that you have to have like that immediate relationship. You guys get to learn things about each other. You have fun, you communicate, and then you start figuring out like, okay, what kind of music do they like? And you could have the best dancer as a friend, 
and never have a relationship with somebody. And people tell me when I, I tell them that, they're like, you're out of your mind. You mean to tell me that you never did anything with that person? Like, no, because we we hit it off so well that it's just the rhythm is what's the relationship for us, if that makes sense. So is there someone, and and what you know, whether you do or not, but is there someone that you've come across that they've been like your and it could be family, it could be a friend, whomever. But have you ever come across someone that you knew kind of like, all right, they got rhythm. That's the person when I go out, we step out somewhere, that's the person that I want to dance with. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, my dance partner, every time, it's going to be my grandpa, Tony. Okay. That man's got rhythm. He is six foot huge and just towers over you. But it's like he can spin me across the dance floor. And it's like I'm always wearing I'm always trying to wear the best fit to every event that I go to. So my grandpa and I, it's so funny. <laughs> like me and my grandpa, we dance. But nah, man, like he grew up in the 80s. He grew up in the clubs, like respectfully. But like he was surrounded by music. And I think like him and like through my dad and through I you know like that's how we get that soul we have we have that communication without saying words you know um so yeah no I love dancing with my grandpa he's the best <laughs> that's what I mean because you get there's too many everybody it's crazy because when you, if you talk about a relationship somewhere with a friend like for me for example I it, it's the opposite you would have to say like I have a friend girl because you say girlfriend then people are like, oh, you know, what you like? And so, and it's different. But when you're in a relationship, the person then knows, like, oh, no, this is my girlfriend. This is my fiance. This is my wife. So it's different when you meet that person. Because like I said, everybody, I think people emphasize too much on how I have to look or feel or anything else like that in order to develop a friendship with someone else. And it's it's good to have a friend that you can rely upon when, you know, different things happen in life. There's a good event, bad event, whatever the case may be. For you, is there someone that's that special minus family, but do you have that one person in your life that you can say that's like your ride or die? Oh, yeah. I sure do. My ride or die is actually here with me. He's um, he's set up this entire setup. He's, oh, he's perfect. And I know that's very dangerous to say because it's like <laughs> through imperfections, you find that sometimes you just mold the best with imperfect people because you're imperfect yourself right. and it's like we're constantly growing with each other we're constantly learning from each other and so you know uh i actually this is so cheesy but i i just wrote him his first song the other day and um it was the first song that i produced all on my own too so i was like look honey i'm so proud that i wrote this whatever whatever and he's like listening to it and um one of the lines is um I love how I don't have to speak for you to understand because man, he just gets it. He's on the ball every time. And it's like anytime that I start to get like a, a higher level of energy, whatever it may be, like here he comes with his wit and his, he's, he just <laughs> knocks me down every time in the best way. And I get to fall in love all over again. See, that's the best part because my fiance, it was funny because we were riding around the other day and she says the same thing to me. It's like, I can almost at this point know what you're, you're about to say without before you saying it. And that's the best part because in, when you find that right person, and you build that bond, it's like you want to, I never thought in a million years that I would want to be with her like all the time. I just thought like, oh, okay, you know, you have relationships, they may not have been the best, whether it's personal, whether it's friendship, whether it's family, because we all go through our ups and downs. But when you feel that person you really connect with, it's the best feeling in the world because you know like, okay, today it was a so-and-so day, but when I go see him or her, it's like, I'm I'm just waiting. It's like that puppy, right? That puppy that, you know, when you come home, it's like, oh, I can't wait. The puppy's all excited and wagging his tail. So that's the, to me, that's the better part of it. But listen, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know we're going to be together there on Sunday. It's going to be a great time. But I will say, I would love to have you back. And if he doesn't mind, maybe we'll have him on the next time so he can uh, share some stories as well. Sure, absolutely. I'll definitely try to convince him to come be on the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's your turn. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to being with you in person on Sunday. It's going to be a great event, and I know everyone's going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, big single the mile celebration. For those who don't know, the Orlando Predators, go to OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com. Come out and party with us. There'll be music out on the street before you go inside the Kia Center. Then at the Kia Center, 
All the artists are going to be there. They plan to rock the house. For those who, uh, you know, I'm, I'm aging myself when I say rock the house, but no, nonetheless, it is, it's going to be a great time. So let's, thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it. Can't wait to see you guys on Sunday, and we're going to do this again. Yes, can't wait. All right, and everybody else, uh, stay tuned. There'll be more Backstage with the Predators. I'm Angel Martinez with the Orlando Predators. 